For most of the week, we've been focusing on sounds. So now let's turn our attention to how words change their meaning over time. And this happens in several ways. Words can go from being general to specific. Words can become more positive or negative. They can change because of, because of their association with a related word. Or they can be chopped up and split up in all sorts of new ways. We'll look at examples of each of these. Specialization means taking a general word and making it more specific. For example, in Old English, the word hound used to mean any kind of dog, but nowadays it can just mean one kind of dog. Compared to its German cognate, Hund, which to this day still just means dog. Meat, um, or Mette, used to mean food or any kind of meal. And nowadays it can only mean flesh. There's still dialects of English that have words like sweet meat, where the word meat still means food. I mean, sweet meat is a dessert or some kind of candy, for example. So this is taking a, a general word and making it specific. The opposite process is generalization. For example, bird used to mean small fowl, but now we use it for any kind of bird. Barn used to mean just a place to store barley, but now we mean use it for any kind of agricultural storage. So this is taking a specific word and making it more general. <clears throat> Amelioration means taking a word and uh, making it more positive. For example, pretty used to mean tricky or sly. It was not a compliment, but nowadays it means uh, something agreeable or attractive. Knight used to mean boy, and it was a despective word for boy. But it became ameliorated and then became the word for the brave person in armor. Compared to its cognate in German, Nicht, which to this day uh, means servant, it keeps, still keeps the negative aspect of the original word. Pejoration is the most interesting of the bunch. It's when words become more negative. And this can tell us a lot about the cultural biases of the people who speak the language. For example, the word villain used to mean farm worker, but now it means villain, someone who uh, commits crime. Peasant used to mean person who lives in um, a rural area, but I bet all of you would be very insulted if someone called you a peasant. This is a pattern of people from the cities taking words about people living in rural areas and turning them into insults. And it is sadly a pattern that many urban communities have around the world. Can you think of any other examples of um, words that have to do with rural areas that we now take as insults? I'll leave that question floating in your mind. A second terrible pattern of our cultures is in the examples below. Here we have pairs of male and female words, which originally were very close in meaning, but then the male word became better and the female word became worse or more negative. Governor and governess originally meant some, someone who managed a house. Governor became like a person involved in politics, but a governess meant a nanny. Courtier and courtesan were people in royal courts. Courtiers all fell out of usage, but courtesan eventually came to mean prostitute. Bachelor and spinster were uh, unmarried people. Batch a bachelor is someone who can be very desirable, but a spinster cannot be desirable. So you can see how all the female words became more negative or worse over time. And this is because of the sexism of the people who use the languages. Can you think of any other words where there's a male female pair and the female one is more negative? And if you speak other languages, do your languages have those as well? Let me know in the Slack uh, discussions. So we have generalization, specialization, and amelioration, pejoration. Let's look at metonymy. Metonymy means associating a word with, associated the meaning of a word with something else that is closely related. For example, if you say the White House issued a statement, it's not the building, it's the government which is associated to the White House. This is metonymy. When you say Hollywood makes movies, it's not the zip code that makes the movies, it's the people who inhabit or at least go to work there. Many words uh, have changed due to metonymy. For example, a loony and a benjamin are ways of calling um, coins and banknotes. 
a mouse is called so because of its physical resemblance to the rodent and so forth. Reanalysis is one of the coolest ones. It's when speakers of a language reinterpret the morpheme boundaries and uh, by doing this basically come up with new words. For example, this fruit orange used to be called a norange in English. It's because it was borrowed from the Spanish word naranja with an N, which ultimately came from the Persian naranj with an N. It was orig originally a norange, but the morpheme boundary got reinterpreted and speakers of English thought that the N was actually part of the determiner. So they started calling it an orange. Same thing happened to a napron, which became an apron. So as you can see, the morphing boundary was reinterpreted and in the process, this changed the word. This process can also be used to create new roots. For example, a hamburger used to be a concoction from Hamburg in Germany. However, the, um, the edges of the morphemes were redrawn and now it's, this is split into two roots, a ham burger. So that burger became a root on its own in English. And now we can have formations like veggie burger, for example. But originally, the morphemes were, the edges of the morphemes were in a different position. If you speak French, an illustrative example of this is the word licorne, unicorn. In Latin, it was unicornius, like one horn. Uh, the uni mean, meant one. But the un resembled the determiner in French, as in a unicorn, un unicorn. So because these two resembled the determiner, they were split from the word, and this became un icon. Over time, icon came to be associated with the other determiner, the definite one, licon, for like the unicorn. And then these became fused, and now we have the word licon, unicorn. So you can see how the word was chopped up and fused back in a bunch of times until we got our modern form. Finally, words can fuse to form new morphemes. In late Latin or vulgar Latin, the phrases I will love and we will love were amare aveo, amare avemus. These two uh, words here were like the auxiliary verbs. Um, have like I shall love, we shall love. In Old Spanish, they were simplified. So the aveo became e, avemus became emus. So these were uh, de amar e, de amar emus. I shall love, we shall love. These two became reinterpreted as morphemes and became attached to the verb. So that in modern Spanish, we think this is a single word. Amare, amaremos. And so in the process, this word became a morpheme of Spanish. English has had this. For example, leak, similar or like, was an adjective and it became attached to nouns. So you would have something like fa uh, father leak, like a father. It eventually became a marker of an adverb. So this is fatherly now in a fatherly fashion. In Old Spanish, um, we have the formation rápida mente, to do something with a quick mind. The mente was reinterpreted, the word mind, to now be a, a, a morpheme to mark adverbs. So now we can have rápidamente quickly. And the mente can form all other kinds of adverbs. The Swadish list I told you would get here. So all words can change meaning over time. However, there are some words that are very stable in the languages of the world. It's probably because they're not very dependent on culture and they're always around us. Things like blood or bone. Like all cultures have uh, people with bones and blood. There's words like uh, that depend on nature, like mountain and tree. Like all cultures have some must have some mountain around them. Words for objects and other objects in the natural world. Again, tree, leaf, fish, bird. Um, and there's things that are related to all humans, like ear, nose, mouth. So because these can be found in every culture, they're more stable, and so we can use them to compare languages across 
distances because we would assume that these words wouldn't change their meaning or their sounds a lot over time. This compilation of words that are stable is called the Swadesh list, which is what we've been using throughout the quarter for inventing your languages. All right, words can change their meanings over time. In the next video, we'll talk a little bit about how writing was invented.